Hello and welcome to the second video in this beginner series for HTML, JavaScript and CSS making Space Invaders. This video then, what I'd like to do, I just switch to the browser, I'd like to set up our playing area so that we've got this big horrible green border around our playing area. And our playing area remains centralized inside the browser and we can do that with CSS styling. The other thing we'll do is change the font so we've got this slightly gamey font here and we'll put some placeholders on the top left hand side for the lives and the scores for now which will become dynamic uh, later on. So to change the look and feel we're going to use CSS, cascading style sheets. Um, inside the styles here I'm just going to make a new file, call it styles.css and inside here I'm going to make some styling specifications. So the way it works is you just simply choose your element, in my case the body, and I can set some particular properties. And here I set three properties. I set the background colour to black, finish with a semicolon, the font family, finish with a semicolon, and then the colour to be white. And if I now go back to my browser, I'll find that nothing has changed. And the reason nothing has changed is I've got to actually include a link to my CSS file inside my index.html. And we'll do this at the top in the metadata so it's all loaded our rules for styling our page before it starts actually the browser starts drawing the stuff inside the body. So now I've included a link to the CSS sheet and here it's a link uh, element that you use. You say what the relationship is of this link so the browser knows in this case to expect a style sheet. There are many more you can use and what the reference is. So going back to the browser now then if I just refresh you can see we've now got a black background and we've got our new font looking slightly different. So what I'd now like to do is go about creating the play area um, and the first thing I'm going to do is delete this h1 and this paragraph out and then switch back to the browser and just a couple of things I prepared here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make two boxes essentially. We're going to make a div that's called a play window and that's going to be set to something using flex. You can read about flex in detail in tutorials of CSS, but essentially it's going to, in our case, occupy the entirety of the window. And then we can say that anything inside that, how we'd like to position it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a div called a play window. And then we're going to have another div inside there called our play area. And we'll set our play window to put its content, so in our case the play area, in the center. This will have the effect of always keeping our play area in the center. What we'll do with our play area is give it a fixed width and a fixed height and we'll give it a solid green border as well so we can see the border. And then we'll have the play area set up and good to go. So back into Visual Studio Code then I'm going to add in a couple of divs. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each of these divs an ID. An ID is a unique identifier for any element. It can't be used, or it can be, but it shouldn't be used more than once. And usually browsers will only take the ID for the first element of the particular ID they come across. So anytime we specify some styling for some an element with the ID play window, it'll be for this div here, the play window, and the same for the play area. So we have our two divs, let's go into styles.css and now set up some of the styling for those elements. So the first one we'll set up is the play window. Now for the body we just use body but we're using an ID here so I'm going to use the hash to say I'm looking for an ID, play window. I'm going to give it a position of relative, so a position relative to its parent which is the body. Tell it that its display mode is flex so its content will be using a flex box. And to centre the content inside it, that's the important thing. And then for the play area, I'm going to set up the style slightly differently. I'm going to set its position relative to its parent. And then I'm going to give it a fixed width and a fixed height. And our play area will be 720 by 576 pixels. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a solid green border of two pixels so we can actually see our play area. So if I save that file and go back into the browser, I'm just going to refresh here then, and now you can see I've zoomed out a bit too much, so I'm going to zoom the zoomed in, sorry, I'm going to zoom the browser. That's better. You can now see that 
we have our play area if I get off these elements that's better we have our play area now in the middle of the window and when I change the size of the browser window the play area sits in the middle and as of this fixed size 520, 720 by 576 next thing I'd like to do is get the scores on there as well so the way I'm going to do this then is I'm going to specify uh, three more divs to represent each of uh, the items that I want to uh, display and for now just some placeholder text so an x2 uh, we'll put 1000 and 1000 in there for these divs and now if I go back to the browser and have a look how that looks you can see they appear now in the top left hand side of the screen they are however very tucked up in the corner the fonts a bit small um, so I'd like to apply some I'm going to make another div container around these scores here and I'm going to give this div its own ID as well. And I'm going to set up some styling for my score container. Now in this case, I'm going to do what's abs called absolute positioning of this particular div here. And if I just go back to the slides that I created before, um, anything inside the play area will be, abs uh, well not anything, but a lot of stuff will be absolutely positioned. That means the top left corner here is x0 and y0. The bottom right is uh, x is 720 and y is 576. And those are not written as x and y in CSS, but top and left. So top would be the amount of y pixels from the top and left the amount of x pixels, so pixels from the left. So I'm going to say I want to position it absolutely, which means I'm going to give it some left and top coordinates. And I'm going to give it 10 pixels from the top and 10 pixels from the left. I want to align the text to the left. And I'm also going to increase the font size and I'm going to give it something called a Z index. So I'm going to do 1.5 times the standard default font size in the browser and Z index is how you view things on top of each other. Everything in the browser, is drawn and anything that comes afterwards is then drawn on top of what was previously drawn. Well we want our text to always stay on top and what you can do is you can specify something called the Z index to say what should be drawn last effectively and always seen. So for example if we draw a sprite, a spaceship and we have a Z index of 20 it will go behind our text, our score text if it ever moves up there and towards the text. If, if our spaceship had a Z index of 40, then it would appear on top of the score, anything inside the score container. So I'm just going to go back to the browser with our new styling. And now we can see that we've got bigger text and things are looking a little bit nicer. I would like, however, a little bit more spacing in between these. So back in index.html, I'm going to give each of these a class and I'm going to call them uh, the class score. And then in styles.css, now I'm going to apply styling to a class, and for that you use the dot. And here I'm going to just give 10 pixels of padding, so inside the element itself, 10 pixels of space, so it looks a little bit better. And now you can see it's more readable and nicer to, to look at. So good, that's it then for this video. We've written a little bit of code, we've included a styling file, we've got some placeholders for our scores and things like that and now we're ready to get on with the next stage which is actually get the main game up and running and programming we've got our play area all present and uh, we're ready to kick on so again as always uh, comments questions welcome any problems or anything I'll try to help out the code is on github uh, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one